This week on Wrestling Mayhem Show, we're talking about House of Horrors, Payback, Women's Wrestling, and uh, Smashing Pumpkin buys NWA. The gavel David Lawless joins us. This and so much more Mayhem Show. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Mayhem Studio in Pittsburgh, PA, Mayhem Central, back on the East Coast. And uh, with me today, I got a, a whole crew <laughs> in the chat rooms already on fire tonight. First of all, coming at us from Johnstown, PA, he is Bobby F. J. Town. Hi, everyone. I've been gone for a while and I'm back. Bobby, you were like full of fire and and talking about your pops and making I'm me laugh, and then you're just like, I'm like, it's what? Bobby FJ Town, and you're just like, hi guys, I'm Bobby. I'm trying to ease my way into the podcast. I have an unhealthy obsession with pop figures and uh, like long walks on the beach. I don't like to walk. Um, look, have you seen me? <laughs> <laughs> especially, especially on the beach, sand is hot. Sand is hot, and there's. And, and and contrary to what everyone knows about Johnstown, that there's a lot of water, there's no sand. <laughs> and what sits in bags trying to keep it away from houses. There you go. Educational as well. Also yeah. with us, we got a crew on the couch. First of all, of course, uh, Chad the Shad, OG Mayhem Shower. Hello. Good evening. <laughs> I, too, am here. Fantastic. And our special <laughs> guest for tonight and our own personal uh, legal counsel. Am I allowed to say that? Am absolutely. I, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. He is the gavel David Lawless joining us here on the show this week. You're welcome, morons, for being on here. <laughs> awesome. Thank you for having me, though. No, thank you. Hey, hey real quick, uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk more, of course, on the on, uh, Indie Mayhem show with your interview here later this evening and be in the feed here. In a few weeks, but uh, uh, who are you for those that maybe don't come to you know uh, shows you, you're on in the area? Sure, I am the Gavel David Lawless Esquire from uh, two places: Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, or the courtroom from your last parole hearing. And uh, I am the greatest attorney and professional wrestler known to man. So, if you want to know what the hottest person in professional wrestling is like, look to the Gavel David Lawless. Because let's face it, attorneys are the cornerstone of this country. Nothing gets done without an attorney, so who better to take over the world of professional wrestling than the gavel David Lawless? There you go. You can tell, you can tell he's had some training. He's looking directly into the camera, and it's a confusing prospect in this room if you haven't been in here. Well, so. there's like eight cameras, so... <laughs> you picked the right one. <laughs> good, good. Off to a good start thus far. There you go. Perfect. Uh, so he's going to be with us uh, chatting at Wrestling of the Week, and of course, you can check out everything and be a part of the show at live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Every Tuesday at uh, 10 p.m. Eastern, lately we've been live on Facebook Live. And uh, please, if you follow the Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show, you'll get those notifications when we go live on Tuesdays or any other time where we have uh, maybe pop-up Indie Mayhem shows or other events going on. Or maybe we just play WWE No Mercy for for the uh, N64 for a while online. Who knows uh, what you'll end up with us. Or maybe I'll go live at an intermission at a wrestling show. That's been happening a lot lately. That's always fun. That's, that's always a lot of fun, actually. So, um, Also, you can uh, check us out. Please subscribe and, and, and see everything over at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Follow us on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Uh, Facebook, of course, Wrestling Mayhem Show. And you can please subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and video versions on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, drop us a line at that email address. Good times. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the hotline. Put on your phone. Please drunk dial us. 412-206-9670. Put in your phone. Well, you've been drinking at that indie show uh, on a Saturday night, and you're like, I got to talk about wrestling with the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Drop us a line. Dial it. You don't have to think about numbers and letters because we put letters in there, too, for some reason. Uh, uh, and, and drunk dial wrestling us. You don't have drunk, to do that, bro. Drunk wrestling dial us. It doesn't work the other way. Thank you also to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. 
uh, that are putting money into the show to help support it, and that, that helps pay for the, our server fees, things like that. We made, did an upgrade and put a lot of our feeds over on a great new host at Fireside.fm, which is good because I think our old host doesn't like the swears anymore. Uh, so it's a good time to move, apparently. Uh, but uh, and actually pay for service. Yeah, That's right. nice, too. What's that? Damn right. Damn right. <laughs> yeah. You're darn skippy, Bobby. Uh, this but, is the PG era of yes, the wrestling Yes, the Mayhem PG show. area. I don't know what we need sponsors. So, you know, Coca Cola, we swear we won't swear. Uh, <laughs> They're a good one. Indubitably. Indubitably. We're looking at you, RC Cola. Uh, but, anyways, uh, thank you to our friends. <laughs> Go watch <a> soda. <laughs> hey, they have, they, they have cornered the market at PPG Paint Arena. So <laughs> they did. It's so what? relevant now. How did they get Why? that deal? <laughs> I feel like they took a hiatus for about 50 years. And then when the PPG <laughs> Paints Arena opened up, they thought, aha, Man, this is where this, we're going to come back. Let's save our money for this. <laughs> right. I can't yeah. wait. I can't wait for Heinz Field just to like every soda uh, uh, fountain in there is Fago. You know, oh. I mean, let's just go the whole <laughs> way with it. Although I love Fago, to be quite honest. Moon is the shit. But anyways, and they don't care. Obviously, they don't care if you swear because it's insane clown posse. Right. Uh, but anyways, thank you to our fans of the show on the Patreon, including a longtime fan of the show at the Dollar Lover, Bo Diggity. Woo! Some hesitation on that one this week. Our friend, our our man of the ice cream, uh, Ed Burke, uh, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin's Foundation for Podcast Betterment, uh, Trey Gar, check out tra- breakingtrayfabe.wordpress.com for him. Alex Cars, a uh, power to the smart, who I just had lunch with yesterday in downtown Los Angeles. Uh, good to hang out with him and see what's going on. Uh, I, I, I took a plane. Bobby, oh. that's we can do that these days. How did you fly? What? <laughs> what is plane? <laughs> Bobby, there Bobby, are no planes in Johnstown. Las, you go to Las Vegas every year. How do you get there? By boat. <laughs> uh, walk. <laughs> Jeez. You just, you you just say you don't like to walk. Not on the sand. That's on the sand. Right. Okay. I got you. I got you. Um, just, just the strip in Las Vegas. Oh, by the way, FJ yeah. Town. Did I say? Did I, did I say you yet? That was easy. There yeah. you go. And a thank you to our Pocky Club five dollar level. They get the Mayhem Show Gold, which was a lot of fun this week. Uh, Tina K, Tina Keys out there out, out west, and Christopher Bishop. Thank you so much, everybody, for supporting the show. All right, let's get into wrestling talk because I think that's what the show's about. I want to talk about planes now. <laughs> I know they exist. Welcome to the Plane Mayhem Show. That actually could get weird. So, uh, and the dog doesn't Mommy. like it and everything. No. So, I think it's because I, I, bound, I found it on the table. Wicked's like no planes. Uh, was I on Xbox flight? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's way too uh. soon. Well, you made it back. Xbox. So. Xbox. I, wasn't on Xbox flight. No, Xbox didn't make his own flight. Yeah. Um, I guess we can mention uh, Xbox got called with, caught with, what is it, weed and meth? Yeah, weed at, and meth. At the border? Um, yeah. in, in customs or something like that. Um, Xbox, yeah. man, come on, dude. <laughs> come on. Something sounds very fishy about them. this whole situation, though. Really? That, to me, seems pretty extreme. The, yeah, why would, why would you think... Why would you try that, right? right. Like you, yeah. maybe he did. Like you know, there's always the notice. Like if somebody hands you a package to take with you, don't. Like, yeah, I like, think I think it's going to be a situation of wrong place, wrong time. To be honest with you, I hope for his sake. Yeah, well, they, they said he was trying to sell it. Well, like it wasn't his stuff. Like he was just going to try to sell it. Well, was he trying to sell it, or was it he had enough on him for intent to sell? Yeah, see, I that's, think that's that, yeah. that's well, okay. <laughs> hey, good hey. week to have you on. <laughs> so it's not actually yeah. the uh, the actual use of drugs is not necessarily illegal. It's the possession with the intent to sell that's the the actual mm-hmm. criminal act. So. If you reach a certain threshold, like you had said, mm-hmm. yes, that's you would to, get charged. That's what happened to Jeff Hardy. Right, exactly. Like, he exactly. was coming up on trafficking charge, wasn't it? Because he just had so much stuff. Correct, yeah. So, it's actually, that that's what the crime would be. If you have over a certain level uh, of any type of substance or illegal substance on you, you would be charged with possession with intent to deliver. Uh, Tina's uh, in the chat room saying that Xbox is going to explain. 
explain his side of the story on his own podcast tomorrow night. So it's really good that all the wrestlers have their own podcast so they can explain when something like this happens. So, I mean, what actually is good. As opposed to back in the day, whenever you just let the dirt sheets write about it and then everyone just jumped to a bunch of conclusions. Yeah. 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 Like like some people in the basement on a podcast. Well, here's a funny story, though, if if there's a tie into the law. So I don't know if you know this, but uh, Jerry McDivitt is the attorney for the WWE and he Mm -hmm. works out of a firm in Pittsburgh called K&L Gates. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the whole reason why he got connected with Vince McMahon in the uh, late 80s when uh, I think it was Road Warrior Hawk was on a flight connecting in Pittsburgh to get to a show somewhere on the East Coast, one of the flight attendants on U.S. Air had said that he had threatened her, which was at that time a federal crime Mm -hmm. because the flight attendants were controlled by the uh, FAA. When he landed in Pittsburgh, federal marshals arrested him and put him in federal prison. And what he called rush. McMahon, and McMahon needed to get someone in Pittsburgh to get him out. Mm-hmm. He called the local, um, uh, it would have been the local district attorney or the uh, at- attorney general in Connecticut at the time and said, do you know anyone? And she hooked him up with Jerry McDivitt in Pittsburgh, who was able to get him off of the charges, turned around and sued U.S. Air for making false accusations about the assault. And then once the whole steroid scandal came down, he got McDivitt to represent him again, exonerated him, and that's why K and L Gates and Jerry McDivitt represent him from here until eternity. Wow. Yeah. I never knew that. No, I never I never heard I of that. I didn't know he was in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah, I awesome. guy just So they're Mr. McMahon, in Pittsburgh. I got a future here. <laughs> I got I got some work to do. Yeah, hey, stick around Pittsburgh. You never know how you'll be connected. Well, between that and um, you know some of the doctors, especially the neck surgeries, are, are based here in Pittsburgh. Uh, Allegheny General, actually, yeah, I believe. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of connections here. Yeah, so. there's. I mean, and then you know you have the Connors Cure Foundation through mm-hmm. Children's Hospital, mm-hmm. and you know we have one of the largest teaching hospitals in the world here at UPMC. So there's a lot of connections between the wrestling industry and Pittsburgh, which is great. Britt Baker went to dental school there. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. just keep it going. Just keep it going. Um, yeah, Kurt Angle had to go all the way out to Clarion. <laughs> what? yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> That's true. That's true. So um, Damn true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh Billy says the get the gavel should uh, uh offer his services. Anytime. <laughs> there you go. Anytime. <laughs> Now, X Pac is one of the few people that probably could afford the Gavel David Lawless's services, unlike the morons that sit at the shows. <laughs> exactly. Right. Um, wait, Dave, uh, I'll save that question for the Mayhem show. I, I just the things are connecting in my head right now. Because, Perfect. You, but we'll, we'll we'll save that for the interview later. Perfect. Um. Anyways, uh, let's let's move from the law to real estate. Uh, I'll tell you guys oh, the order. This is gonna be a great tie-in. <laughs> this the is law. gonna be a great tie-in. So, I rather than talking about the wrestling and what was interesting on the show and 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 things like that, I think um otherwise you know, I just talked about Patreon and I told you guys before the show like pay attention to the Patreon uh because we're going to add a new level. Okay? And we've tried this in the past. I believe at one time weren't we trying to buy TNA at one point? Yes. Um <laughs> you were you were around when we tried to do yeah. that. Yeah. Uh the first time they were in trouble. Um but uh in 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 maybe a couple other ones that have popped up over the years. But uh according to deadspin.com of all places, is deadspin doing a lot of wrestling stuff? Like, yes. Are they TMZ and stuff? Here, here and there they pop up with yeah. relevant articles. I, I don't know how relevant this is, but uh, what? To be honest, yes. The news has broken across various other platforms as well. It's not just Deadspin. Okay, so like this I've, is, this I've is, seen it in a few different places. It's one of those things that this kind of popped up a bit. So, but they uh, were first. producer Missy, ladies and gentlemen, who I think I missed Hi. the introduction on, but of course you missed my I, uh, introduction. Well, again. Yes, that's we gloss that over. Yeah, well, here you go. I at least uh, I think it's not going to be one of those weeks. I swear. I swear. All right, and mute her. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but anyways, the house from the House of Horrors is for sale for just <laughs> just thirty six thousand dollars. Oh, that's awesome! Which is I in my price range. I, I you know that sounds like a podcaster's house right there. Um, now now if I buy it, do I get those uh, those blue lights that just destroy any definition of video? <laughs> That you have, <laughs> or or just, or the the, or the, the room or the, the the room of hanging babies. Uh, uh, yes. I mean, is that like what about 
like the Undertaker. The antler shrine, the antler deer shrine, uh, bird's nest. It's basically if you guys have seen the Sawtooth Willie thing that we shoot here, it it's mm-hmm. like if Sawtooth had his own house. Yeah, uh, it, yeah, yeah. it would be in here. Uh, but between the deer antlers and everything like that. Now, um, does the fridge come upright? Well, I was going to say, that's probably why it's 36000 because you have to put your own fridge in it. Yeah. <laughs> that would probably up, up the resale if it had full, full utilities. Full, fully, yeah. furnished, fully furnished. Fully furnished. Fully furnished. Right. Sorry, you have to replace the fridge. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> the fridge is now a chest cooler you lift up from the ground. It's not a vertical um, refrigerator I, anymore. I have a friend who had a refrigerator pushed on him when he was a child. <laughs> Granted, it was a like daycare ki- play kitchen, but one, one of his bullies like pushed a refrigerator on him when he was a kid. And it just I, I, I he's not a wrestling fan, but I was going to tweet him and say or I was going to text him and say, "Hey, they pushed a fridge on somebody. You might want to not watch this." <laughs> It'll give you flashbacks. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Uh. If you if you're wondering some logistics about this, uh, it, a little bit of a reveal here. Um. Hold your horse. You know. Hold, hold on to yourself if 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 you have certain you know thoughts about wrestling. Uh. But but uh. It, this was sh- the the house. Where was where was the show Sunday night? San Jose. San Jose. San Jose. Which San Jose. is in California. Not correct. Correct. Yes. Which San is on the West Coast. <laughs> yes. And where it is sun. Where it is sunny despite being in the yeah um <laughs> definitely when a pay-per-view is on at eight o'clock eastern time which is five o'clock pacific time yeah. in the late spring or mid-spring um bray should know this he was <laughs> at a wrestlemania on the west coast with the scarecrows who weren't as scary because it was still daylight yeah right? daylight scarecrows yeah yeah, yeah. you know bray turned the sky black with his shrine if only right if only yeah. that would have been cool um and baby dolls and baby dolls Oh, let's not keep up with the baby dolls. Anyways, there's a point here. Uh, the house is actually in, wait, it's right here, is uh, in Richmond, Missouri. About mm-hmm. 45 minutes from Kansas City, where I'm going to be very soon. Uh, I, very I can place. visit the house. There you go. They might be having yeah. an open house. There you go. For sale. This Live will, stream. This will be, there you go. It'll be like last year when I visited the TNA offices, both of them. And actually, the second one that I thought was a TNA office looks like the House of Horrors. So we go back to that. Um, but but no, it's it's in Richmond, Missouri. Um, not anywhere near San. About twenty eight hours. <laughs> they used from, a rocket powered limo from San Jose. <laughs> Driver, the, the take DeLorean me to the arena. When eighty eight <laughs> miles per hour went forward in time. <laughs> exactly. You know, time the zones. Paper. They crossed back the other way over the dateline. It it was fine. It was fine. Yeah. I was say like, you you got you told you're telling me about you had like you just got hung up on the driver part. That was a, for me. That was the funniest line in the whole thing. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, sometimes somebody says something, you're just like, man, that's funny, and then everybody looks at you strange. You're like, I don't know. I find it really funny. I almost had tears coming out of my eyes because he just gets in that <laughs> limo and he's like huffing and puffing. Mm-hmm. And then like he looks at it and he just goes, driver, take me to the arena. But also like, like, like he's going to crack like a Sprite and pour some <laughs> vodka in it. Like, oh boy, that, that was a tiring match. Driver, to the arena. Like Archer style. Like he's just like, getting in the back of this limo. <laughs> Ray Wyatt too. Like, ah. Uh, I, I just, for some reason, I thought it was really funny. And was my girlfriend the hated the whole match. <laughs> it was a unique was, concept. It was, to say the least. You can't, you can't, you can't discount that. Um, I, I don't blame WWE for for taking a chance on mm-hmm. something like that. So, so, so it, it, it it's hard for me to follow because I'm watching this thing. Next day, I'm in a Starbucks watching on my phone. It's just too bright to watch it. Oh yeah, it's just straight too. I, I still need. I need to like just rewatch it on a TV, right? In at night, probably. But my, but my my impressions of it so far was like it. It's you know, and everybody's going to draw comparisons. It did in this article, and everybody's going to look at it as like, well, it's like the 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 Hardy final deletion, right? It's this produced thing outside the, sh- which you could also kind of compare it to the boiler room brawl too. I think sure, but that it's like produced a little bit more 
um, you know, we've we've talked with Agana uh, on the Mayhem show, you know, uh, about how how that was, you know, the final deletion was shot with like four people, you know, over like two nights. Yeah. You know, period. Versus, you know, this was the way this was shot like a you know, horror movie with all its flashes and everything like that. But I think you're starting to get a little carried away with the Bray Wyatt thing, you know, you know, to get like it, it felt like when they were flashing around Bray's re, you know, entrance and, and exit on the main event on Raw last night, it was just like, all right, come on, guys. You know, do we really need to show this again? You mm-hmm. know, like like the whole sequence, you know, scary Bray sequence, um, just to transition here. Uh, so, although I love Bray last night in general, um, it just, uh, it feels a little too disconnected to me. For what they're doing. I, I would have liked it a lot more if they would have not had them coming back to the arena. Oh, yeah. Right in there. I think yeah. if they would have left it as just a, you know, pre-roll or a pre-produced segment and match. Yeah. It's kind of cheating the fans at the live event, but. Who were booing it apparently the entire time. Okay. So, well, I mean, <clears throat> I think in today's day and age, it, it's difficult. It was It was cool back in the day when you had the Boiler Room Brawl. And then, I, you know, I almost saw this akin to the Hollywood backlot brawl that Piper and Goldust had. Mm-hmm. But if they would have kept it just <laughs> contained, well, yeah, that was temporally relevant, which made it awesome. <laughs> um, but if they would have just kept it contained to the to the pre-tape, I think it would have been a lot more effective. And uh, I don't know. Personally, I think it was it was well done from a production standpoint. I think when you see it on TV, you'll yeah. see that it was yeah. well shot. But I almost thought back to when they had the New Day versus the Wyatts at the Wyatt compound, which was really cool, in mm-hmm. my opinion, and worked as a nice segment on Raw. I just think adding in the idea of coming back to the arena was it may have been a little bit of a miss here. Kind of dis- disjointed a little bit. Uh, from the chat room, we have some comments going on. Uh, Tina says, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy Havoc had a hilarious tweet. The only reason why I was the House of Horrors was because of the horrible housekeeping. Uh, yeah, somebody's <laughs> fired there. Uh, Mad Mike says, uh, Michael Cole kept calling the House of Horrors. Which would have changed Bray's gimmick a lot. Uh, <laughs> it would have looked like from Dust Till Dawn in that thing. Yeah, a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike's that having a problem. Been a real good match. Mike, of course, is having a problem with how the fuck did Randy get back there before Bray? Uh, he Ubered right after. He, it was like yeah, just like an Uber, you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the Uber is like pretty. Tractor. Yeah, yeah, the, they, yeah, haunted tractor. Haunted tractor from hell. Haunted uh, tractor can fly faster than the rocket powered limo. Oh, that's great. Billy says, I wish the driver would have been Elias Sampson playing the guitar. Oh, jeez. Man, <laughs> that's a great tie-in right there. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. There's, there's some better comments. There's I'm working comments. on it. I'm working through it. Um, or just hear his music play over the stereo. <laughs> um, I mean, that would work, too, as Bray singing. Um, I would have loved to have Luke Harper be the driver, just get a bit of a Revenge of Bray, but I digress. Uh, there's already too many people involved in that match. I uh, love to literally see anyone be the driver, even just Eric Rowan with a cap over his sheep's mask. <laughs> <laughs> it was heavy breathing. The match. <laughs> it was. It was. It was a little bit, you know. And plus, like, you know, that awkward thing it was like, "Hey, here's Randy Orton without a shirt, uh, walking into a strange house." Is like, you know, I don't know to catch a predator style. I don't know. Someone uh, said they should have uh, spiced together Undertaker driving the limo. When Bray got yeah. in, where to, Stephanie? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, yeah. It, it, I guess that mashup. Oh, kind of well, it, it's kind of like the the who the hell? Like, remember the, the in Final Deletion, there was the referee like driving up. Yes, <laughs> kind of sequence. Yes, like I feel like the limo driver needs a like. Oh God, oh God, I don't get paid enough for this, you know, kind of thing, right? The limo yeah. driver he waited been the, the entire time. Exactly. That was nice of him. What's yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. He yeah, waited he the entire the time. Was nice well, if you get paid enough, right? I mean, the only he thing is the wrong client. He didn't open the it doors. Was supposed to be Randy Orton. No, he didn't. I'm very upset. <laughs> what kind? Of, I mean, the limo service is doing all this, but he can't come around and open the door. Somebody's not getting five stars. That's <laughs> what ruined the match for you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the authenticity was gone That's once right. the limo driver didn't maybe, open the door. Maybe that should have been the winner of the match. For every client, you know, he comes around and opens the door like a steel cage. What? Every, oh. Get in. <laughs> First one in the limo, I shut the door and limo. we're gone. You know? That's it. You win. This is not you a good escape the this house. Is, this is not a good neighborhood. That house came that way. There is no. <laughs> Even the babies. Come on, come on. Yeah. Get in, the biggest get in. mystery of this, this match, though. 
One, who was Neil? And two, <laughs> what was in that box? Neil, Neil's work Neil's box. box. Neil's work box. Neil's WWE work box. Yes. It's uh, when you didn't Bray... See, oh, you, didn't, you probably get that far. I, I, well, I didn't... I didn't, I didn't I, couldn't see it whatever it was but. when bray was coming into the arena there's a big production box that oh! says neil's neil's work <laughs> neil's box, work box. A big wwe on it like, oh, neil, neil's got a it's coming up it's coming got up his own work box. His own box we don't see that much of backstage as much anymore so no. you know um i think that's why that's please don't out. use to hit other wrestlers it's neil's work box yeah oh, Kenneth Paltrow's head <laughs> <laughs> What's in the box? What's in the box? That would have been a good tie-in. That would have been great. <laughs> would have been a really good tie-in. Can we just do a seven. I mean, Sister Abigail's head. Like right. you said, oh. like you said, back back when we're back lot brawl, we had an OJ reference, right? You know, an un yeah. like we didn't even like like just care. We're putting an OJ reference in this or that tongue in cheek. I remember. I think I was maybe. 14 maybe younger when that was happening and i just thought when i saw the clips this is awesome <laughs> like they somehow figured out a way to use the oj simpson clips and tie it into professional wrestling oh yeah that's so cool um did, did he have to type in how did randy have to type in house of horrors for his uber how would he be able to get reception in rural kansas city <laughs> i that's a good question we're gonna have can we should can somebody at uber uh and ask if uh, it, I don't know, can, can you take me from? Can, can you take me Jose? from? How long would it take you to get? Like, I've heard of long Uber rides and everything. I've heard like somebody needed to go from Pittsburgh to Philly. Oh, wow! You have to accept it, but still, sure. Got me to the arena pretty fast, man. I'm gonna give you five stars. <laughs> <laughs> no tips because this is Uber. Um, the drive back would be terrible. <laughs> Trying just, to pick, trying to pick somebody back up. Anybody come back out? No, no, no. no. Now we're good. They, they okay. missed, Damn it! They missed, a, they missed a golden opportunity for the driver to ask where to, and Braid just go follow the buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and the, I feel like we should talk more about payback, but I feel like that's all we really need to talk about for payback because <laughs> nothing. It was. It was good. I. I it was a good show. It, it was like a, a larger raw. It was not not that there's anything wrong with that. No. Well, you had the but, awkward situation of having to transition some of the talent over from what should have been a raw exclusive pay per view to SmackDown, yeah. mm-hmm. and that's why you know I think I wasn't surprised to see that Kevin Owens won the Universal title back, or I'm sorry, the U.S. U.S. title back tonight because they needed to get Jericho over. To SmackDown to have that title be on, and I think uh, the smart marks uh, are like, well, Jericho's losing this one because we all know he's coming here to Pittsburgh in two weeks right? sure. for the Fozzie tour and everything. Um, so nice thing to bring him over and do that and do what they did. Um, so I, you know, I think that works really well and it kind of tied things up nicely. He has something to come back to now, right? right. As well, right? right. Uh, come back and get his revenge on on Mister America Kevin Owens. I thought it was a good show though. Mm-hmm. I really did. I thought it was a good show. I thought the the characters that they needed to to get off the ground and get some momentum and traction for it worked well. Mm-hmm. I think the title matches all went well. Alexa Bliss was fantastic, and she was fantastic She's on Raw. Always fantastic. Yes. And then from there, I think Strowman did a great job in the main event. Um, you know, and then you had the House of Horrors match, but you got Jinder in there, which was fantastic too, because then that. Gave people that might not be as familiar with the SmackDown brand some yeah. something to look at. Mm-hmm. Oh, what the? Who's this guy? Wait, yeah. wasn't that the guy that was doing hey, meditations a couple weeks a ago? Minute. That's the guy that knocked Finn Balor out. <laughs> right. Get him. <laughs> Get him. <laughs> now, did Popovich from Dragon Ball Z? <laughs> this is now. This was something that I had accidentally caught because after the pay per view went off, they get to they went to talk. Raw talk, raw, raw talk, raw, yeah. raw dogging, as, <laughs> raw dogging, as they should raw call dogging. it. But um, they went to uh, raw talk, and they continued the <laughs> Roman Reigns bit. Mm-hmm. And what I thought Roman should have been on the show, mm-hmm. they went back to the ambulance, and Strowman knocked an ambulance door <laughs> off the ambulance by trying to, by trying to hit Roman. Yeah, and then Roman slammed slammed him with the door a couple times, and then. Strowman kind of like slunk off. I love, 
I love the vision. Yeah, like, yeah, it, it, like broad and kind of slunk off like like I got a, like an animal that had to lick its wounds, right? Yeah. Like like, um, ah. you know, when when you when you step back at the bear and then actually yeah. you know get it in the nose, it's like, oh, you know, I'll be uh, back for you. But but you still have that that visual of like Roman just bleeding and broken. Yeah. Uh, like on top of yeah. things, you know, he got but, a last ditch, but he like he didn't win. Yeah, and I understand why they put that on that show, but like mm-hmm. I accidentally caught it because like I had gotten up to clean some stuff in the kitchen and mm-hmm. I was coming back and I'm like, hey, what's this? They're still going. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh well, if you didn't know, like if you just turned it off, you might. And it's so yeah, it, it's absolutely. You don't get the full story. Like you don't get if you just watch the pay per view, you don't get the Finn calling out, you know, Brock that led into Raw, which strangely turned into an IC Championship thing, which everybody was just so kind of okay for, right? Yeah, but still great to see because this is a fun match. Um, but, uh, you know, which, you know, if this is what they're going to do with raw, then I'm, I'm pretty happy with that even too. I feel like, you know, we, we, we went through that same phase we did back in August, um, where we're like, Ooh, I don't know how this is going to go with these new rosters, but once they kind of set their lines, you know, right. our, our, our storylines were like, okay, I can dig this, you know, cause there's something different happening in women's here versus here. There's something like you're seeing, I know we're kind of saying, wow, really? When we look at um, um, Brizango and Jinder Mahal are now wonder- number one contenders. Um, mm-hmm. But still, it's like, hey, he Slater and Rhino came out of left field with that yep. first yep. mix up, right? Yep. You know, why, why not? Yeah. I mean, it, it's like, you know, they're living up to the land of opportunity on both sides to a certain point. Other people are getting the opportunity to set up and step up and see, you know, because there's no one face of the company anymore you know yeah. like randy orton's a freaking champion he's the only high level champion how much do you see randy orton as face of company versus your your seth and kevin and chris jericho and 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 you know the less of john cena of sorts because he's doing movies um oh crazy movie by the looks of that trailer too yeah so something a little, a little different for him i think it's pretty cool um okay not too different because he's a soldier again but still uh, <laughs> a little more serious he seems a little more flammable in this one uh than the marine um you know so so i think like it's it's cool because wwe isn't like hulk hogan john cena or these three guys you know uh, rock triple h stone cold it's wwe mm-hmm. right yeah. these are the faces of wwe you know between your you know nakamura's and your bobby roots all the way up to the main roster and everybody going on there. Well, I think WWE has realized that, you know, you looked at the different eras that they had with, you know, you had the Hulk Hogan era, then you had the Stone Cold era, and then you had, you know, more of the, I call it the dark years, at least for my wrestling fandom, and then CM Punk came back and really ignited everyone's passion again. But now I think they realize that people have different interests and different things that they like. So, one thing WWE has done effectively, I think, is given people an opportunity to shine in these multi-man or multi-woman matches for title shots. So remember back when they had the universal title that was vacated, you had Big Cass that was getting a, a legitimate push to main event these Raw shows and even some of the pay-per-views. And I think that did wonders for him and Enzo as far as the tag team is concerned. Same thing, you know, with Jinder Mahal, same thing with Brizango, same thing with Heath Slater and Rhino. You give these lesser known talents the opportunity to shine on this national level and people take a liking to them. Not maybe because it's the best wrestling, but because they're good characters, they're entertaining and it's different. And there's yeah. also so many of them. Like you're, everybody you may complain about like a Tyler Breeze hasn't been used like forever but now they're getting an opportunity, and what do they do with it on that level, right? Right, and so. I, one of the problems that WWE has, and it's not even a problem, they are jam-packed with talent. Oh, yeah. Jam-packed well, it, with somebody, talent. Somebody somewhere said that there's no reason with the talent that they have, they shouldn't be putting on a WrestleMania-level show every week on Raw. But there is, because you cannot sustain that right. level of entertainment. It's right. just mm-hmm. It's impossible. And if you do that then you're going to cheapen the the major products that you have because there's almost nothing that can live up to that. Mm-hmm. Um, That's like doing a season finale on all 10 of your your television episodes. Mm-hmm. Like you can't you can't white knuckle your way through a, like a TV show for 10 episodes and think like 
Right. It was kind yeah, of like, yeah, like, is... like Raw, we're used to, oh, we got this big main event. Who's going to get involved in this one? You know, yeah. and that's kind of the formula for something like that. Um, you could, I mean, if you're really kind of math it, you're just like, yeah, but is Finn really going to get this? Oh, I'm getting Kabuki sticked. <laughs> Are you Kabuki? I, okay, I gave, hold on. We, we, I, I, because I've been such a horrible husband and showrunner, <laughs> uh, we gave, no, that's a piece of pizza. Uh, we gave, we gave producer Missy something in case you needed to get my attention. Uh, old that she got the kabuki stick, <laughs> so and I just got a poke. And uh, is this I need to look at the chat room poke? Yes, okay, because the chat room is they're talking, very angry. <laughs> well, they're talking about a lot of the stuff that you're you're dealing with, and uh, John Ashbaugh actually just chimed in with the you get the element of surprise with different things too, and I think he's talking about uh, with the roster shakeup because. Mm-hmm. Who's going to show up where? Who's going to start feuding? Who's going to do this? Exactly. You know? Yeah. So no, absolutely. Uh, so you know, and you know, there's a discussion about storytelling and storyboarding and 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 everything like that. Oh, Tyler Breeze also trained by Lance Storm. That's a good. I did not know that. Can, which which can member of Team Storm wrote that in the chat room? <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah, it was Tina Keys out there by Seattle. Tina so Keys. okay, she's, completely. She's definitely on Team Storm. She's definitely. Yeah. I, that's de facto Team Storm. Yeah, I'm still not exactly. convinced it's not R.C. Jackson or Jack Pollock that had her <laughs> that had her write that. <laughs> An alias. Hey, if one um, of them's been. Oh, Rizango. Go ahead. Rizango had the best se- uh, segment on SmackDown tonight. Bobby, can you can you enter your camera space and tell oh, us about sorry. it? <laughs> I'm looking at the right camera, aren't I? <laughs> yes, that's the right <laughs> camera. You're doing a good job. Good job. This is why we put you on uh, television. But yeah, they, they had they had the they had the you know best segment on SmackDown tonight. It was it was like a Law and Order parody. Mm-hmm. With with both of them trying to oh it's so great catch everybody <laughs> and back you see that? Goes, the the, the Freddie Blassie picture behind them <laughs> yeah the Vince McMahon mugshot up in the top corner oh, of the, I didn't the, see the, that. the board oh I didn't see that um, yeah it was it was amazing but again they're getting back to that and I think when you look at that and you look at Raw um, as apparently I said on the Raw wrap up last night that I wasn't on. Um, the, yeah. that, you know, the backstage segments are fun. Um, a lot of people mm-hmm. are complaining about Booker T being a part of that raw, uh, common commentator team, but I, I've been listening to the commentary, maybe just because I'm watching in a Starbucks by myself and I don't want to listen to the music, but, but I love it. It feels like everybody's having fun. I, that's yeah. why I love Byron as part of that team on raw, right? Uh, Booker, no, Booker does not make any damn sense sometimes. <laughs> Let's be honest. Right. Near this yeah. JBL. But. Did you know David Atunga's out filming a movie? <laughs> did you know? Maybe Booker could be filming <laughs> you, a movie you someday. Know you know, hey, did you know everybody's a kid compared to Booker T? Um, guys, David Atunga is out filming a movie. <laughs> we want to make very clear David Atunga yes. is filming a movie. They said it right at the beginning, right before Backlash started last night. David Atunga out filming a movie. That's like saying on assignment, you know. Um, it's it's. Yeah. Uh, but anyways, uh, but no, but between that or or the Jericho Drifter uh, uh, moment and everything like that. Yeah. I, <laughs> uh, Man, Mike, I hope you're in, aren't insinuating that you weren't well re- represented on the wrap up last night. Uh, please don't know. I was. I was. Um, up in the air during the wrap-up filming last night, so I was. Uh, uh, Mike uh, took it upon himself to play both sides of the conversation on the wrap-up, uh, which is strangely on point to what I was going to say. So uh, I guess we, I guess we, we know each other a little too well on that one. So <laughs> I, I encourage. I, I imagine you check that out. I, I did. <laughs> I did. There's there like, a Twitter tense, exchange. There's a Twitter. Oh, okay. So I'm getting <laughs> messaged because I only got messaging on on the the wi-fi on the plane and yeah. strangely i can receive all the likes and tweets and everything like that but i can't go into the app to load them it's a weird like so one way the, so yeah. i'm getting all these messages that are replies back and forth between you mad mike mayhem account they're and they're all, just links to gifts that i can't they're see all, they're all popcorn <laughs> and, they're all, and i finally looked at it this morning and it's all just the back and forth of of the Joker eating popcorn, Deadpool eating popcorn, you know, every just popcorn, popcorn, popcorn. Yep. Yeah. I stuck a corn on the cob cat yeah. and guy eating. He that. snuck some he snuck some pre popcorn. Our in Twitter there. gets weird sometimes. Um 
Jeez. Uh, Nitro just showed up. He can't go to NXT, come up from NXT yet. Come on. Uh, we uh, JBL has to make a couple other announcers cry in order for that to happen. Oh. Um, allegedly. Allegedly. I'm, I did that right, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Thank allegedly. You. Thank you. This is what we've needed here on this I'm, show. I'm de facto in-house counsel for the <laughs> wrestling mayhem. <laughs> it's, usually, it's usually <laughs> her, so... Uh, no, 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 not technically. Be like, if you were a lawyer, that'd be okay, right? Uh, so, <laughs> well, you know what's funny too is I always get the question. I think like when you are a lawyer, people assume you can just do anything, <laughs> and that is the furthest thing from the truth. Like I practice personal injury law, and it's like, oh, I got a traffic ticket, but you you can get me off of that, right? Like, no, like <laughs> I'm not like a magician. Like I just I know what I know. You know, it's like, oh, do you know anything about election law? Of course you do. You're a lawyer. No, I don't know anything was, about was election it, law. Was it you I was talking to that said that, that, that was like everybody asked Chris LaRusso about getting off on tra- traffic tickets? No. no we're, somebody, somebody was telling me about that. No. I, was like, I was like, oh, yeah, we see Chris. Ask him about getting off of a tra- traffic ticket. And my see his uh, reaction. My, uh, my, my classmate. Yeah, your classmate, Rick, Chris LaRusso. We graduated from law school at the same time. Mm-hmm. Little did we know Almost that our paths days. would cross at some point. There you go. Yeah, we're coming up on ring. seven years. Wow, from graduation. Nice. Really nice. Get you almost punched me one time. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you jaywalking? <laughs> what? D- no. <laughs> That's how us lawyer professional wrestlers handle legal yeah. situations. By punching. By punching people. By punching. Well, no, I, that please, that cannot be construed as legal advice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta put a new disclaimer at the beginning of the show now. Yeah, Thanks strike God, that. You know. exactly. Strike that strike from that. the record. <laughs> Objection. Strike uh, that from the record. But you know, I think one one thing that's interesting, if if we can get back just a little bit to the WWE and like oh, their oh, their oh. talent roster. Before that, by the yeah. way, circle back around. David Otunga, also a lawyer. Also a lawyer. <laughs> yeah one one of the also inspirations in my career. <laughs> Also out filming a movie yeah, right when, now. When's your movie coming out? You know out? what? I, I have to figure that out. I have to, That's going to be a disclaimer to all the shows that are booked on. David Lawless is out filming a movie. And there you go. Welcome to the show. Yeah. And welcome to the show. Uh, hey, there's a lot happening here in town. I know some friends. Maybe we can get on Outsiders as an extra. Oh, That's nice. Like some of our friends. That'd be great. So, yeah. Uh, but anyway, so you're, you're getting to a point. So I, I think what's interesting is that, you know, there's a weird transitional phase that WWE is going through right now, and I don't know that they have fully figured out exactly how they want to format all of their shows. You know, we talked about they have so much talent that you're right, they could put on WrestleMania level shows every night, but you can't give that to the audience because you can't sustain that pace. And as they transition, I think, I don't know when their contract's up with the USA Network. But at some point, they have to be looking to transition from a network-based platform to basically their own streaming service because mm-hmm. that's the way that all media is going, it appears. I, I feel like uh, well, within uh, five years, you're going to see your Ron SmackDown on that network. Well, you know? And maybe it'll be tears, too. You know, like Maybe it will be like... Because they they tease that idea of you pay ten dollars for this, you pay fifteen dollars sure. for this, much more. Sure, um, which I think a lot of people will, you know. Well, I mean, if you look at what Netflix has done to television, they have changed television shows in general. And I don't know if you can do that with wrestling, but you know, there has to be some type of transition from the product that we've known to what it's going to be in the future. And I just don't know that they figured it out yet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry yeah. for cracking up during that, but I accidentally shut the Bobby while he's looking up. <laughs> yeah, I was looking up. I was looking and at the then, camera that was up there. And then I saw it again on the feed. It cracked up uh, again. <laughs> so. It's like a bad dubbing from a, uh, <laughs> kind of from like a Kung Fu movie. And I'm like, right <laughs> my nose. I'm just, sometimes this doesn't work all the time. It's good. Anyways. It's like Bobby's, like, you know, saying all those things. Like, um, <laughs> Kai and Tai used to do back in the day. Oh, yeah. indeed. 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 Okay. <laughs> Running pretty thin on announcers. Uh, Nigel Nigel thinks still thinks he's in Ring of Honor, as was demonstrated at a at a, a, a takeover. Yeah. <laughs> I Nigel. love Nigel, but man, <laughs> and it does like NXT feels like Ring of Honor, maybe because half the roster is there, and plus, yeah. yes, absolutely. And that's just probably thinking he still is at Ring of Honor. <laughs> <You're> just, <laughs> like I know all these guys, I'm still at Ring of Honor, like, right? Yeah, this and, like, NXT Karina, event they put on hey, is pretty hey, nice. Mr. H is there. Yeah, Mr. ROH right. is there. Uh, 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 Carino's hanging out over here in the performance <laughs> center. Uh, uh, Sarah Del Rey's here. You know, I mean, it just this is just so familiar. So. Roderick Strong is a, a prominent part of the roster now. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, Which I couldn't be happier for because I'm a huge Roger. I'm glad fan. they're doing something with him because we, yeah, that, we uh, talked about this on the NXT uh, midweek. It's just he's like, I know he's great. Yep. But he is so flat right now. <laughs> well, no, I like I like the vignettes that they're doing now, though. Oh, absolutely. It's awesome because he looks like that, you know, teenage heartthrob in all the 80s movies that like has it all put together. And now they're peeling back the onion and showing Maybe he doesn't have everything figured out. Like he yeah, looks like yeah. he have, should have a good relationship with his family, and he has everything. Just everything goes his way, and that's not the case. And I think that's going to be awesome for his character. Yeah, absolutely. Because he, because he was always just the guy that came out there and did good matches. Right. Oh, it's yeah. Roger Strong. He's going to have a great match. Right. And adds another dimension to him. Yeah. But in Ring of Honor, that works because yeah. he can say, "I'm the most badass dude mm-hmm. in Ring of Honor, and I'm gonna I'm gonna come out here and lay lumber to people." Mm-hmm. Now that they're you know developing the character of Roderick Strong, I really am excited to see where he goes from here. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, <laughs> good point. Tina Tina's uh, saying Kings of Wrestling are there, one on NXT, one on the main roster. Yeah. Uh, but I, okay, we have to talk about this. Uh, Cesaro and Sheamus. Applauds all around. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. All around. Amazing. They got cool great stuff. Now. Absolutely they got cool great jackets. stuff. <laughs> Sunglasses to to let you know they're heels. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, the how, is. how good can you get? They mm-hmm. are peaking yeah. like yeah. hard with this, and mm-hmm. it's great. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Um, it's Cesaro in a tag team again. This guy can't he can't strike out when he's with when he's when he's got a partner. No, they've he, he's still great in singles, but you give him a partner and he is platinum. I mm-hmm. think him and Tyson Kidd would have had a really good, good yeah. run as tag team yeah. champions too. They were starting to heat up real, real good too. Mm-hmm. The one thing I'd like to see Sheamus and Cesaro do a little bit is a couple more tag moves. Like uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro had the swing into the drop kick, mm. which was their finisher. Right now, you don't really have that. You have, and and I don't know if that's because of how they're 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 telling the story of these two guys together. But now that they've kind of turned heel together and meshed together and seem to be on the same page, I'd like to see them do more tag moves so that you solidify the fact that this is a solid tag team that can win the titles. Because right now they're just two guys that like to punch people uh, in tandem. Pretty much. Yeah, which is... I, wonder, Go ahead. I wonder if they're going to rename them The Bar, too. Because they've been calling them, they said, We Are The Bar. And that would be kind of a cool tag team name. It could be. Yeah. Cesaro doesn't do tag team names. Man, yeah. he's. I, I just, I'm just thinking back through all of, just just in WWE, all of his partners that he's had. He had Jack Swagger. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, when they were doing the the awkward Real Americans gimmick, yeah. it was not as awkward as the Del Rio comeback with yeah. Colter. Um, hey, maybe they'll resurrect that in the Impact, Impact Wrestling. Uh, reverse atomic drop into a bro kick from John in there. Nice. That'd be nice. Nice. That would be nice actually. So, all right, guys. Uh, I think we've uh, uh, paid back a lot. No, that doesn't work. Uh, we talked a lot about payback. So, on that point, uh, I want to give a shout out. Of course, our uh, sister site over at IndieWrestling.us. Uh, support Indie Wrestling over there. Our friends of the show, uh, International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, and of course, uh, 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 Premier Championship Wrestling, who's going to be holding a big Walterweight uh, Wrestling tournament. Um, crazy show from the looks of it happening this weekend in cleveland uh on sunday uh and that you can check out at our other affiliate uh fight.tv you can click on the link over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and support the show go pick up the pay-per-view i think it's only about 15 bucks uh the pre-show will actually be brought to you by indie wrestling.us there will be a facebook live pre-show for uh the welterweight uh championship tournament uh so stay tuned for that on the premier championship wrestling um or welterweight wrestling actually facebook page and of course that'll be linked through all the uh, indie wrestling and and i'm sure we'll share it over here on wrestling mayhem show and everything as well so go check that out that's going to be a really big show i believe it's a 185 pound and under show uh friends of the show like dylan bostick are part of that jason gory is a part of that sammy guevara is a part of that uh a I think Ophidian got, he was replaced somebody, right? Ophidian's going to be in it. Sean Phoenix is going to be in it. Mm-hmm. Lee Moriarty is going to be in it. Oh, Moriarty's great. Yep. 
Uh, so and then, and another guy we've been seeing down at PWX has been really impressing. So yeah, um, and I think a former member of your stable too, wasn't he? Former member of the order, yes, <laughs> the order, <laughs> yes. Which we'll get into that on Indie Mayhem, but uh, uh, definitely some guys to look out for. I, I mean, uh, indie wrestling is always big because I mean, half the people we talked about today we have seen or met, you know, on at Indie Wrestling or in, interviewed here on the show before they were big. Uh, hi, Corey Graves. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. things like that, right? Uh, so you never know who you're going to see here on Sunday um, at uh, Waterweight, uh, that Waterweight Wrestling Tournament and Premier Championship Wrestling that's going to be up there someday. Uh, be the next Drifter or be the next uh, Kevin Owens. You never know. Uh, so or, or a platform that takes off on its own. Yeah. I, I really think that, you know, um, Joe Dombrowski is, is a great visionary, and I think he's on to something here with the Welterweights. I hope that this is very successful. I hope everyone listening and watching goes out and watches this event and supports it because I really think he's on to something. You look at the cruiserweights, now you go to the welterweights, and a lot of good talent is going to be on there that people I don't think have heard of before but are going to want to seek out their matches. Sonny Vice is another one Mm -hmm. um, that I can't say enough great things about. Good stuff. So go check it out. Uh, We're going to be right back after this message with the big question. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net. Wrestling Mayhem Show, Bobby F. J. Town, looking at the sky. Oh, oh, sorry. Dreaming of sorry. what he's going to do with that house of horrors. A great Very place. Wide, right back. Breakfast. Very <laughs> wide bed breakfast. Yeah, he's gonna make it. He's gonna make it a house of fours. Brothel. House of horrors. Is, is that is that okay, in Missouri? Are they allowed the, to do that? It's gonna be the best little one in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> That's a movie reference. Uh, <laughs> who sta- who started that movie? Is doing right now. <laughs> who started that movie? Anyway, Dolly Parton. Uh, yeah, Dolly Parton. Uh, hey, no, no Dolly Parton fans in the house. Is uh, David Otunga. <laughs> David Otunga is actually filming a movie with Dolly Parton. Oh, that'd be amazing. Right <laughs> Working nine to six. <laughs> <laughs> um, any, oh, jeez. I, I remember that now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, my mom was a huge Dolly Parton fan. A lot of that and Kenny Rogers. Anyways, that's a whole other thing. Um, big question time. Uh, where we like to tickle the brain... Wrinkles. <laughs> well, yeah, Tickle we're, brain. We're, we're, Get, shows going here. Bobby F. J. Town, yeah. David Lawless joining us. Professional wrestler and lawyer extraordinaire, and <laughs> Chad the Shad. Yes. Missy with the Kabuki stick gonna hit me anytime now. Uh, so the big question this week. This one actually submitted by Tina Keys out there, a Patreon supporter of the show for a good while, and joins us every week out there. Um, graduate. What's that? Storm Team Storm graduate. Storm Academy Storm, graduate. Storm Academy graduate. Tina Keys. Um, uh, who would you have called the upcoming women's tournament that WWE is going to have? Uh, well, you know, of course, you know when we had the Cruiserweight Classic, it was it was uh, Daniel Bryan and Maro. I almost said Maro Ot- Otunga, but that's not right. <laughs> Um, he's gone. He's, he's gone a month, and I haven't remembered his name. Oh. <laughs> he's filming a movie. He's also. filming a movie. Yeah. Yes, he's, he's calling him an <laughs> MMA, taking pot shots at fake wrestling. Um, but uh, Maro when Ranallo, you punch the guy, sometimes you win the match. <laughs> yeah. That's David Otunga calling MMA. <laughs> I, yeah, that'd be good. that'd be interesting. Um, but no, who would you have call it? Who like what 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 pair of people would you have uh, call it? Anybody have an idea? I think. Uh, Trish Stratus and Lita. Ooh, ooh, like just the two of them? Well, I, I feel like you need a traffic cop out there. You probably do need a third in there. Um, I don't know if they would have three women on commentary. They would probably no. throw a male voice in there. Yeah. Um, I could see it being Corey Graves. Okay. Lita and Trish Stratus. Wow, I like that. Chad. Well, uh. I would think uh, kind of teeter here. I would like to see Jr. Mm-hmm. call it mm-hmm. uh, with a with a strong female voice. I mean, you can pick any of the former divas. I think they would do a wonderful job, like uh, Beth Phoenix or even Mickey James, Trish, Lita, any of them. Um, 
for fantasy, I would love to have CM Punk call it. I always like CM Punk I mean, on commentary. I mean, yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> him or Stryker would be great. That's if you're. Man. That's if you're fantasy. That, that, that's dreaming. Fantasy that's booking. dreaming. Man. But really, CM Punk calling it would be really good. Those those couple of months when he was calling like just uh, straight commentating, like you kind of wish he was around so he would have yeah. transitioned. And it was the same thing when Stryker was moved to commentary for a mm-hmm. little while. Then mm-hmm. he he just took off. He's awesome. He's mm-hmm. awesome. That that broadcast that him and Jr. did from Wrestle Kingdom Nine was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he's great on Lucha Underground too. Yeah, his enthusiasm between him and, and and again it's that thing that I'm talking about Monday. The reason you love Lucha Underground other than every, all the craziness going on is like those guys are having a blast. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely having a blast. And, and I, it just comes through the screen. It comes through the speakers. Yeah, and I think in a setting of a women's tournament where you want to get people um, educated and involved in a tournament like that, they would be Mm-hmm. They would be a perfect way to grab your imagination and get you into those types of matches. Well, I think too that you know the WWE is in a unique position where you know when they did the cruiserweight tournament, they didn't really have a defined cruiserweight division. So you had Daniel Bryan, who was arguably the most successful cruiserweight in WWE, mm-hmm. along with Mara Ronaldo, who's just a fantastic commentator. Because you have an established women's division in WWE. I think what you could do is have two individuals that are dedicated to commentary, and then you rotate in mm-hmm. one of the divas, excuse me, one of the women from the main roster. Mm-hmm. So I could see Charlotte getting in there and doing commentary. I could see someone like Alexa Bliss going in there and doing commentary. Okay. Not to say that that would be the strongest people, but I could see yeah. WWE tying in their main roster women to the women's tournament. And how great would it be to get somebody like Sarah Del Rey in who is possibly... Damn, taking mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, sorry. Who had, who had possibly had a hand in yeah, getting absolutely. him there? That's that's my my thought too. Is like I, I think her being a part of that. I think um, if they wanted to go all women, yeah, as far as because I'm thinking a traffic cop, right? You need a Michael Cole, you need a Tom Phillips or something, yeah, right? It's right. like the UK um, tournament, Nigel, right. Michael Cole, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think I think, and I don't know how much you know. Who knows? You know what she's shown off because I I don't think she's had this position a lot. Um, why not? Renee, as the, oh, the Michael yeah, Cole of it, great call, yeah. you know, great call, and then it could it, be a breakout awesome. role. I think that's <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm now messing up Bobby's, um, <laughs> but Segways. you have that, and you have Sarah <clears throat> as the trainer that that probably has seen. I'm, I'm you're just going to be a smattering of those trainees coming up through there, yep. um, or ones we haven't seen yet, uh, you know, and and or maybe more of ones like um, um, uh, Kimberly, for instance. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it, in oh, what was my third? Damn it! <laughs> oh, I just thought of another one. Um, Maria Canales. Maria could, yeah, Maria could be good because I think what her and Michael Bennett just got resigned to yeah. WWE. Yeah, they were talking about them debuting on SmackDown, but I could see Maria coming back and and, and doing commentary or uh, being like the host of the actual women's tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, Sarah Renee and I would put in like a Trisha Alita. Yeah, to be, like and that rounds it out and gives a little bit of star yeah. power to it. Because I, 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 I would caution the Trish Lita thing because I don't think they would gel well. On, I mean, they're great friends and whatever, but I just think commentary wise, I don't think they would gel too well. And that's Maybe why, Molly but, Holly. You know, Mo- Molly Holly would probably be good. I, mean, I don't know how yeah, she on commentary. Though. I don't know because not everybody's great on commentary. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, Bobby, now that we've taken all the good ones. Yeah, Bobby, what do you got? What you got for us? I got, well, I I was going to say, since you guys said about having fun and just, you know, and having good chemistry, I was going to say Dan O'Brien and Renee Young. Mm Mm-hmm. Oh, geez. Talking smack. They make that show. Yeah, actually, well, then that'd be a good transition from an already established Mm -hmm. pairing to add some, I don't even want to say credibility because I don't think, I think that tournament's going to be successful regardless, but. Mm-hmm. To to add a tie in to the actual program itself, so they can get more eyes on it than than they might normally. Absolutely. And if you want to bring in a former uh, Divas champion, um, and somebody who had a hell of a Hall of Fame speech uh, this year, Beth Phoenix, mm-hmm. possible candidate. Absolutely. Uh, from the chat room, right, Missy, do you have one? No. Okay. Not willing the Kabuki stick. Uh, Brandon would have Corey Graves and Renee Young call a tournament. 
uh, Mad Mike, uh, JR, and Sarah Del Rey. A uh, friend of the show, Del- Sarah Del Rey, by the way. Um, Billy wants uh, Corey and JR and Lita. I like that. Uh, John wants Medusa, Trish, and Lawler. Really? Lawler? <laughs> really? Oh. Hey. Well, you mm. notice you mm. that Mike's comment after that comment. Is <laughs> oh, there. hold on. Mad Mike following that up. <clears throat> Keep Lawler the fuck away from that. Um, Brandon would have Austin Aries, Corey Graves, and Renee Young. Wow. Okay. That's I would, yeah. yeah. Aries was amazing on commentary. That, yeah. that bit he was on there. Yeah. So I mean, it's kind of one of those like CM Punk situations. I'm going to be interested to see how WWE markets this tournament also because I think there's obviously a revolution in women's wrestling. I mean, I'm not you know stealing whatever WWE is doing, but I think a lot of younger girls are starting to get interested in WWE's product in general, and I'd be interested to see how they take. A WWE Network exclusive tournament. I assume it's going to be WWE Network exclusive, and get a younger audience to be captivated by it. As far mm-hmm. as young girls are concerned, well, yeah, because I mean, we we're a few generations in. I mean, I, I think it started with you're seeing like you know AJ Lee being inspired by Lita, and now you're getting girls that were are being inspired by Sasha and, and Bailey and and or even a Beth Phoenix or something that that are now Sasha and Bailey, right? Um, so, so yeah, that, 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 that churn has been really good with that. And it's just, just blown all this up. I think we forgot someone that's not wrestling based, but that the WWE could pull out of the woodwork to do commentary. Ronda Rousey. I thought you were going to say Maria Menounos. Well, that would also that, could, would be good. Probably. She, she could she be good too. Backstage yeah. Segments. Oh yeah. Yeah. For sure. I think if they want to try to appeal to a larger market than just your traditional wrestling fans, they may wind up going outside the spectrum of WWE. And Maria, actually, Maria Menudos would be perfect because she would blend the entertainment industry with professional wrestling, and she actually likes it too. She, it, yeah. Again, she, I look for, I actually look forward to the red carpet of the whole thing because it's just like, especially like her doing hard times with Dusty Rhodes, right? Like moments like that. Yeah. Um, because again, loves to be there. It's a celebration. You know, it really kind of feels, it feels authentic, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and raises the curtain a little bit and, and not in a bad way, right? And it's no. that one time, it's really that one time a year where WWE Live just raises the curtain and, 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 everybody's out there and in suits and everything like that right Mm -hmm. Uh, except for sergeant slaughter still has got the hats yeah yeah. you know (laughs) the more i think about it the more i agree with your call on you know maria menudos because i think wwe is going to use this as an opportunity to really launch their women's division even more than it is now well that's the question then after that do we get a women's show i think so do that like i i it absolutely is you know it may get to the point where it doesn't even matter um I, you know going back to the what does wwe do uh with with raw smackdown things like that there's a comment i think mike said earlier that's like they get way too much uh advertising revenue think about the pay-per-views like oh they're getting 65 bucks like actually they're not really you yeah. know they're making more per person off of the 999 because they don't have to go through anybody and there is advertising on WWE network guys have you noticed have you noticed how many ads were on payback the other night yeah. um i mean but i think if you watch ufc you're used to that already right you're paying god knows what for a pay-per-view and you get like 10 ads and it's plastered over you're, my shorts and da, 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 yeah da. so you're yeah. looking at ads so <laughs> ads fight each other in the yeah yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> like you're they're physically they're watching a Jimmy group Jim- of eight ads fight another group of eight ads <laughs> like. exactly so so i think i think the ad revenue so now remember that ad revenue have you know, not uh, don't know the whole deals and everything but that ad revenue is getting split between usa network nbc universal whatever and wwe so they took pay-per-view and said we want the full brunt of this money right um are we getting i'm getting sticked What's happening? I have the chat room's fine. Oh, oh, it's you. Okay, but oh, wow. <laughs> let me finish the thought. I was like, oh no, it's your thing. Okay, but 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 generally, uh, you know, they get a bigger piece of the pie, and they get right. to create the pie and hold the pie and eat the pie and and mold the pie and and reheat it and, and reheat it and then and then have really sad leftovers over pie alone. And I'm it, it, Missy. What do you have to say? You're hurting me. I'm hurting you? You're, you're like physically hurting me. I'm with physically your, hurting you? How? With your words. With my they're words. Just, they're making my brain just melt. Okay. Um, anyway, what I was I'm going to say. I'm just talking about pie. I love pie. <laughs> what I was going to say is 
and it was a topic I think that we talked about last week, that how many of us have the network? How many of us go to a friend's house and watch shows together on one television right. well, we, we with counted, friends? We counted, so, counted the people in the room that all paid $10 for this pay-per-view. They were all watching it at one stream. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, we're all paying the 10 bucks a month anyway, but we're actually utilizing one person's 10 bucks a month. Mm-hmm. And there's a group of 10 of us. Mm-hmm. So, I, I don't think that they're having a monetary stream issue with no, regard to, to any not. of that stuff they said they're 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 getting their money's worth and how many people don't even watch all that much you know <laughs> in, in comparison worst husband ever well and i think too having the three hours on usa you're in a unique position right because mm-hmm. you have you could make raw a two-hour show and then slide a show into the 10 to 11 or the eight to nine hour mm-hmm. if you want to for consistency's sake and i think that's the role the woman's show could play mm-hmm. if they actually do that. I, I'd like to see them do that, actually. Mix things up there on Raw, you know. <clears throat> um, there's a fun exchange that's going on. Um, advertising death machine during pay-per-views or death match during uh, uh, pay-per-views for Billy. Uh, anyone but Zizel, the owl wins. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and We also, like that owl. Also, midweek. Midweek War is going to be so fucking crowded. Uh, the Midweek War is going to be between WWE and itself at this point because it's really kind of what's happening. Because what do we what do we do well, when we do the Midweek War? We talk about two hundred five, we talk about NXT, and we kind of make fun of Impact. You know, uh, Ring of Honor is in a whole other world. I, I really would like to start covering that. Um, I'd love to start talking more New Japan to be honest too. There's just uh, so much there's wrestling just, content out lot. there. So, there's so a- we haven't even talked about major indie promotions. Well, that's for another show. Yeah. <laughs> so we need, we need to bring back that conversation on another show. Sure. But no, absolutely. And, and, and even like this, in the, in the scope of this show, we're like, well, most people are watching WWE. It's top down. That's the general thing. You know, and there's enough there. W- we go back to the days where SmackDown and Raw were supposed to solve the we don't have WCW to compete with. We need to create our own competition. Yep. Now they have Co-op like petition. four brands coming up on a fifth brand that is competition with themselves because yeah. nobody unless they're insane people that run podcasts um are watching every show just on <laughs> wwe you know let alone you know deciding to um try to watch ring of water try to watch new japan you know but it's a full-time job it is a full-time job yeah it is a full time job, but um, you know it, it's. But it's it's it's, and it's not. Over, it feels like it's not oversaturation because they are literally so much different from each other, right? Yeah, I mean, two hundred five live is is different from Monday Night Raw, different from SmackDown, different from uh, NXT, also. Mm-hmm. But at some point, I think NXT is going to outgrow the space that it's in right now. Yeah. And I think that's always been WWE's plan with NXT. But then when that happens, what? where do you go next? So NXT, and also <clears throat> NXT feels like it's what the ECW experiment was supposed to be. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. It was the growing place. It was the redevelopment place. You took Big Show over there, and he was a big, angry monster. It didn't look like he slept for a week. Uh, yeah. you, th- you then you threw Ric Flair in there, and he had a, a tax ladder match. Uh, but uh, but and but then, still, then you grew. Here's, here's Mike Knox. Here's CM Punk. Here's Kevin Thorne. Mm-hmm. Like here's the the ECW zombie. Here. <laughs> like, <laughs> Who still gets booked in West Virginia, by the way, as the ECW zombie? What's up, Bobby? I knew that was going to be the next person named. (laughs) But they introduced, they introduced all, here's Kelly Kelly. They introduced all those people through ECW, which is NXT. I'm sorry, I'm going back to our old segments about Kelly Kelly here, Michael. Michael Q. Knoxville. Q. Knoxville. I forgot what his real name was. Mike, Um, we had referred to Mike Knox as Michael Q. Knoxville for so long on the show. Yeah, yeah. That, and and gave it a Mr. Sork here had Cousin of Johnny Knoxville? Any relation to Johnny Knoxville? No, I don't think we ever went into that. No, he... Michael Q. Knox, Mr. Sork here just forgot that his name was Mike Knox <laughs> and not Michael I Q. Did. Knoxville. So he'd always say him with an old timey voice, Mike, Michael Q. Knoxville, and, and Kelly like, Kelly. Like, what's uh, what's Michael Q. Knoxville's real name? Or like, <laughs> like, I'm in the middle or like, of the show, well, like, it's not Michael Q. Knoxville because that's the name we gave him. His <laughs> his wrestling name is actually Mike Knox. 
Gavin Spears is Ty Dillinger. Finkel was Einhorn. <laughs> I think I think your mic got knocked out again. Uh, the, the, the thing. Let me let me mute you up so we can see if that's going. Yes, live technical problems on on our live podcast. Hold on. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah, you're back. Perfect. All, all right, right, great. All right. Yeah. Just a bump. Just when a, bump. a microphone gets knocked out. <laughs> what? It falls on the ground. It gets knocked out. That's David <laughs> Atunga. Only that action. It's filming a movie. Sorry. Yes, Missy. You know, you is, like... is your microphone the equivalent of a referee? Yeah, it, it is. It can't take a bump? It takes a bump and it's <laughs> out for the rest of the match. <laughs> then you just need to have multiple ones come down and count the pinfall. Don't ask what happens <laughs> when the ring collapses. <laughs> oh boy! I love. Oh, wait, 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 anybody notice like like they they call it like oh uh, referee so and so's back. You remember he fell out of the ring a couple weeks ago <laughs> when it yeah. collapsed. <laughs> so that was a nice callback. Oh honestly, yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah. like hey, look who's back. You know, well, it's nice that they're starting to give the referees some uh, identity. Yeah, because for what it's a, a phase, a decade, they yeah. decided to just ignore them and treat them like yeah. morons. Yes, which I use that term as a term of endearment, morons, not the way the WWE was portraying their referees. But you know, we need to get back to the days of the Earl Hebner's, where like mm-hmm. your referees played a prominent role mm-hmm. in the matches. It just it adds an element to the storytelling. Absolutely, absolutely. Or having a problem with one referee, you know, your Danny Davises and, <laughs> you know. Um, Ty was also Stan that Michael jo- Mike, uh, Shawn Michaels kicked? Yes. <gasps> In one of the backstage wow. segments. Wow. I just kicked Stan. Yep. He just kicked Stan. Right back into, oh, good to see him coming around. That's great. <laughs> I, he, I think his journey has been over a decade yeah. in WWE yeah, it's by itself. Wow. Gavin Spears. Why did they think that would work? Um, anyways, so the story I wanted to talk about this segment <laughs> about 20 minutes ago. Uh, I Well, it, okay. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Because I didn't believe it when David I heard Tonga this. David Tonga is hate, filming a movie. <laughs> did you know David Tonga is filming a movie? He's also a lawyer. I understand. Why do we have an Inquisitor link for this, by the way? He's also married to Jennifer Hudson. <laughs> I know. It's just where is it just what came up in Google? Because I, I, oh, not that I have a better source, because I just learned this from Alex Cars yesterday over lunch. So, um, all right. Well, uh, we, you know, I, I, Billy Corrigan is going to buy uh, uh, the National Wrestling Alliance. Which was founded in 1979. <laughs> Bobby, you need to work on what? your Billy Corgan impression. Have what do you mean? I think a little bit. That's how he sounds, right? <laughs> so, uh, of course, Billy Corgan involved so with... Mr. Rodney Cage. <laughs> oh, wow, there's a picture. Wait, there's a picture here of, of, of Corgan in an ECW ring. I, I'm not aware of this. Whoa! With uh, it looks like that's Carino in the background. Yeah, Carino in the background. Is that the article that I? That's the article that you gave. So yeah. Wow! Look at that. Background and information that you needed, sword. Here's him. Here's some context. Here's him hanging out with good work, Inquisitor. Um, here's him hanging out with Grado. <laughs> Anyways, um, no, no he, he is smashing pumpkins with anyone. Apparently, looking to buy, and actually, NWA was launched in 1948. Um. Um, oh. so the end, of, sorry, Bobby, uh, but no, he's about to, he's apparently looking to buy, um, um, the, the, the NWA, uh, the same, the same promotion that, uh, ECW threw in the trash, uh, impact left and, um, somebody else left BWX used to be a part of, yes, used to be the old NWA, NWA East. North East. yeah, NWA East. Yeah. So, uh, so there's context there. Um, here's, so we've kind of went around with NWA in past discussions, kind of around when Inspire Pro Wrestling was part of NWA for a little bit. Um, a lot of prestige, a lot of history there. WCW used to be NWA. Um, I'm, kind of, I'm remembering these as we go now. Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that always, as we were talking yesterday with somebody, you know, it, it, it's, it's always seems like, I think Alice was saying, like, every time I hear somebody join the NWA, I just t- make a note and wait for them to leave the NWA. Because it <laughs> seems to be the trend, right? Nobody sticks sure. around for it. And then you look at the list of, of groups that are in there and just like, that's a it's strange promotions, right? Or very Southern. Apparently, I didn't know this. They have like an on-demand service. 
NWA does? Yes. I have not investigated this. This is hearsay. But it was, it, again, right? Everybody's my reaction too. Like, you know, they have an on demand service. It's all that old NWA footage that WWE hasn't gotten their hands on. No way. Apparently. What so, is WWE doing not buying that? <laughs> well, they have, they have, how have they not? How have they not? Right. Right. So, yeah. I mean, that, as much stuff as they have. But, um, and, and I've heard of that. I've heard of other promoters that have, like, some pretty decent, like, you know, old footage um, just not selling or not, not making the right deal or whatever the case may be, you know. Uh, if you stream it, they will come. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that's the old adage. It, it, very, it very well is. Like, they'll, they'll, they'll find those, those, those things. So... What the hell is Billy Corgan going to do with old timey National Wrestling Alliance at sell, this point? Right, sell to WWE. Sell to WWE. <laughs> he's going to flip that. He's going to flip that footage. And, and and I went okay. So obviously, Buy low, sell high. Flip that footage. It's going to be a new series. Flip um, that footage. Flip that. Flip that tape library. Um, damn it. <laughs> I had, I had a good point in here, and it's gone. Um, so I'll give you a mediocre point. Uh, so so. You know, and, and connect the dots a little bit. Again, his his interaction with, or his involvement with Impact Wrestling, um, his involvement with friend of the show Dave Lagana, who was involved with the 30, D, 30 Days Project at the beginning of the year, um, who was also did a thing on both Drew Galloway and, um, did I get the name right? Is that his other name? Yeah. Drew McIntyre, Drew McIntyre, Drew Galloway, Drew McIntyre, yeah. Galloway uh, and and Medusa over WrestleMania weekend. Um, uh, and I believe had a pretty big hand in the final deletion. Uh, a lot of stuff that Mike actually likes about TNA wrestling uh, back, uh, about six months ago. Uh, so that's when my head starts to churn with you have this property. You have Dave and Billy who are very interesting creative minds, you know, have touched base and left their mark on Ring of Honor WWE over the years, at least Dave. Um, what could they do in that playground? I I think the there's a lot of possibilities. I think that you know WWE has cornered the market. I think at least on the streaming of, or at least created the idea of creating streaming services. And you see a lot of follow up though. You have your Chikara Topia, the Riz is is been enjoying the hell out of from judging by his tweets. Uh, you have. Uh, uh, it seems like every promotion is trying to get some out. They, Monster I, Factory I, has Monster their own Monster Factory streaming. has their own. Um, yep. um, the Fight TV does their stuff that, that brings a lot of <clears throat> promotions in. I'm hearing of new ones every day from old big names yeah. looking to do one. Yeah. You know? And, and so that has populated the idea, <clears throat> right? Uh, WWE sells their pay-per-views on DVD, so we have to sell our shows on DVD, right? Right. Like, like I mean, right. it, 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 it's a follow-through, and it does create the market for everybody else. So they don't have to be WWE, but there's a big chunk you can grab out of that if, if it's marketed right. Well, you have to take a look. How do you monetize professional wrestling, right? You do it through live events. You mm-hmm. do it through merchandising. Uh, now you do it through streaming services, and you do it through uh, appearances, I guess. I would mm-hmm. consider that merchandising, but, I mean, there's only so much you can do. Um, we got to hold the serious conversation for a moment because somebody just dropped in the chat room. Yeah, friend of the show. Okay. Um, Jackson Argos. Oh, perfect. Uh, says, uh, I don't have time for my usual shen- shenanigans, but I couldn't help to drop by to compliment what a studly, magnificent looking man Lawless is. Just look at that hair. Stay classy. Well, thank you, Jackson. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yes? You left out the Canadian flag and <clears throat> the fist bump. I don't. Oh, do I need to fist bump him now? Is I, that... I'm going to give him a fist bump right oh, yeah, here. Actually, go. we'll call this a gavel pound right here. Gavel, gavel pound. pound for Jackson Argos. I will be de facto Team Storm for the evening, even though I wasn't trained by Lance Storm and I'm not Canadian. <laughs> but I've wrestled Jack Pollock probably a dozen times. You in know, less I, it's than like yeah, you know, so. we have a rule: if you're on the show like three or four times, you're you're a part of the show. Yeah. You know, if you wrestle a Canadian enough times, or somebody was trained by a Canadian enough times. I mean, that's practically dual citizenship, right? Goodness, then I should be collecting <laughs> dual citizenship. You got free health care. Congratulations on your free health care. <clears throat> Thank you. <Yeah. laughs> I, there was a there was that a period going order. where I, I don't think like anyone knew what to do with my character or Jack's character. We were like between storylines, and it was like, well, let's just have them wrestle. Mm-hmm. 
And then two weeks later, we'll just have him wrestle again. Oh, by the way, and thank you for reminding me, Mike. <clears throat> Canadian Dry Jackson Argos. Mm. Is that his nickname? That's a name uh, given to him on the show. Okay, that's uh, to to us. He'll always be Canadian Dry. Um, and I and and Jackson, if if you're listening, just uh, good luck against the Mega Plowers and watch out for the the dab elbow from Jock Sampson. Damn that dab! Yeah, <laughs> you get the dab elbow versus the Jackson Five. That's the world we live in right now. Unbelievable. Um, <laughs> That's gonna, that match is going to be straight character. That is worth the price of admission. Hey, I really wish I was there for that one. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to edit those ones. Um, and I love as if ears burning as uh, we're talking about the National Wrestling Alliance uh, people that worked under the banner pop into our chat room. Um, what's up? It's going to be a lot of people. You know who you are out there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, at least one. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, what it was so Tina's mentioned uh, David Marquez, former NWA promoter, has a similar network that's sort of uh, the same makeup NWA out, same makeup as the NWA out now. And that's the thing. I mean, that's 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 been the conversation when we talk about the NWA relevancy and everything like that. Um, it always comes down to the management seemed off. Um, you know, we all, you know, we mentioned about the promotions would join and then leave indie promotions. I mean, nothing really huge or anything sure. like that any promotions that are doing killer sometimes like like inspire pro um but it, but it's always gone down to like weird things about marketing weird things about um rights and things like that um which, so, which all stems around money which all yeah obviously right right so maybe if this is if if billy's taking it over new management learn from the mistakes of dealing with a panda company uh, you know, maybe this this could bring the right elements together, shed bad ones, some old way. It sounds like a lot of old ways of thinking that didn't catch up. I would really like to see them do uh, like have a national wrestling alliance, but have it work in cooperation with promotions across the country. So the promotions are not necessarily part of the NWA, but the NWA champion would come in and work at that promotion against, let's say, the top person. Like, similar to what the NWA did in the territory days, but let's say you would have something like IWC, right? Mm -hmm. IWC is not part of the NWA, but the NWA will bring their champion in to face someone at IWC. Maybe you have a situation where, you know, the person in IWC wins the title and then they become the traveling NWA champion. Kind of like, maybe a little bit like we would have, um, like speaking of IWC, sometimes they would have the Ring of Honor championship was defended at an IWC event. Exactly. Right? Exactly. So. And, and that way you don't get into the messiness of, you know, you're not technically business partners. It gives you an opportunity to work with, you know, established local promotions mm -hmm. that can draw fans. Um, it gives you an opportunity to potentially make the NWA national in the sense that maybe they take that match and they put that as part of their streaming service or they offer it, you know, as, uh, you know, a separate download for, for people to buy. And then um, you don't have to be in business with the local promotions either. So you don't run into the messiness of, Issues with marketing, issues mm -hmm. with the money. Um, the, the, uh, Tina, the one that Tina was mentioning is uh, United Wrestling Network that I haven't uh, seen. UnitedWrestlingTV.com I found just from a quick thing. No no full mm -hmm. site just yet. Wouldn't it be amazing if there was like some kind of you know, alliance thing that, that happened for indie wrestling, you know, stuff of a certain quality that maybe normalized because, I mean, we know what production is like and, and marketing is like for indie wrestling. It's very haphazard nobody has money so yeah. you don't have somebody willing to work under certain conditions that's not happening you know which is hard to do to get production levels sure up. uh trust me i know uh you know it, it, but to, to have something that that like has an umbrella has resources to it's almost like an offsetting cost kind of thing yeah you know I, what i mean I think one of the challenges that, that any indie promotion faces is just revenue stream. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's a lot of great indie talent out there and indie names, but is it worth bringing those people in? From a talent standpoint, it always is worth it. But from a monetary standpoint, if you have to spend $1,000 to book a national name, let's say you're selling your tickets for 10 bucks, that's an extra 100 tickets you have to sell to your event. And if you're only at a venue that has 500, 600 cap, and you're doing 300 or 400 people a show, is it worth spending that $1,000 to get that person in there? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't... The, the economics of professional wrestling are fascinating. I mean, 
most of the people on the indies are working to get to the WWE because that's where it's supposedly the most lucrative. Mm-hmm. I think the real the real definition of it is it's the most consistent or it's the most stable. I think there's uh, it is the biggest platform. Oh, regardless. absolutely, but absolutely. There's so many levels. Um, there was a great case by by you know listening to Kevin. Kelly talking about Ring of Honor and saying, hey, we have a great place for people to work. Shane Taylor was in here talking about how I was like, no, nah. he's like, this is a great place. You know, it's the right level. You're not being traveled to death because the WWE, not everybody can do WWE. No, it's it's just like not everybody can work in for X company. Right. Because it's it's a corporate structure. It's 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 um, it's a uh, 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 company culture. It's it's personalities, you know. And if you don't fit in with that and can work around that, which, you know, pro wrestlers, you know, a lot of different personalities involved, right? (laughs) (laughs) Right? I mean, yeah. (laughs) So, so something like, you know, some people, okay, I'm not going to say impact, are perfectly fine working with a New Japan, a Ring of Honor, you know, other other promotions or, or seriously do say, yeah, you know, I'm cool with just being interviews. Like I'd love to do NXT. It's a cool place to be, you know, yeah. I'd love to be on SmackDown, but man, I want to start an NXT because that is a, it's a platform where you can really show what you got to skyrocket you somewhere else. Yeah. I think it also comes down to expectations. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, when you say you're talking about work for company X, right? If you're in video production, if you're in, if you're a practicing lawyer, right, I can practice law until I'm 90. Mm -hmm. Um, I can't wrestle until I'm 90 though. You know, there's a, there's a, right. Yeah. Right. Then that's, that's the one exception. Terry Funk. Funk. (laughs) But you know, you you have a shelf life to this. It's why professional athletes get paid so much. I mean, Mm -hmm. they, they do have exorbitant salaries, but if you think about the life of their career, you know, what, what we can do for 40 or 50 years, they can only do for five to 10. So it's like football players, they can go like they might. They're lucky if they go five years, right? But they're getting paid like the low end is getting paid enough to be okay. Compensate they, them for the rest yeah, of their life. Yeah, yeah, if they as long as they manage their money and don't buy a bunch of cars and houses. Correct, and, and that's the thing with wrestlers. I think you know, you wrestle because you love wrestling, but you also, if you're trying to make a career out of this, you need to make sure you can make enough money so that you don't have to wrestle for the rest of your life because Absolutely. you can't it's it's not possible it's not possible hmm? it's, it's not it's not realistic right yeah so right uh for anybody of about any <clears throat> level um all right on that note i think we learned a lot today <laughs> but what did I, you I just, what, I okay, just wanted to say, yeah i just wanted to chime in uh i'm just happy for music fans because we finally get that collaboration of nwa and smashing pumpkins so that's a clever joke Pause for laughter. Pause for laughter. <laughs> like Billy <laughs> Corgan does know that the NWA is a national wrestling. Team. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, like, okay. Okay. NWA now, now, if he didn't know, if he didn't already have wrestling involvement, I would be worried about this headline. <laughs> but yeah, but still, still, just just in case you just didn't see it, like, oh, they're they're for sale. Oh, well. I'm I'm should go ahead and put a bid in just to. Really well, Michael Jackson bought the Beatles catalog, so why not, right? Yeah. Uh, I mean, mm. I, I like weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets he, he gets it, and he's like, he goes, "Oh, the hell was this? I'm not. I'm, I'm satisfied, but this is not what I was expecting. <laughs> what a happy surprise! Yeah. Oh, oh. Here's a good question, though. What do you actually get when you purchase the NWA? <laughs> like I, I, so, tape library. That's it. Mm-hmm. There's no belt. Uh, well, it, okay. So uh, from the article, at the moment, there are 29 independent wrestling promotions that use the NWA name. Oh. So but, you, do you get the lord over them? You, now? Yeah, <laughs> you don't. You, you become the boss. What? You get to lose money now. What? Tina was actually commenting. Some of the promotions that's under the umbrella are Championship Wrestling from well, Hollywood. This is CZW. this is under United Wrestling. Oh, Network. this is under United Wrestling. Is, Network. Like CZW is okay. under it. Rockstar Pro is under it. Oh, uh, great, great promotion. Uh, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood, which uh, Dylan Boss has been showing up out there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so West Coast Wrestling Connection, which I believe is Tina's uh, uh, local promotion that she's been so, yeah. telling us about. So yeah, so I mean, again, I like to see. I had no idea CZW was, and, and some of these were, were involved. These are pretty big names. I thought CZW had its own streaming. It's got its platform. own streaming, but but it, well, I don't know. This United Wrestling Network seems to be still mid-launch from the looks of it. Their site doesn't have anything going on, Yeah, for instance. So, 
Um, I didn't I didn't dive into their Facebook. So there's more wrestling for us to watch. Yay! (laughs) We just need to start more podcasts around them. Um, Anyways, (laughs) guys, what did you learn from wrestling this weekend? You guys in the chat room as well, Uh, Bobby. I learned two things this week. Uh, I learned David Otunga is off filming a movie. <laughs> and I, I also learned it, that WWE is dropping the ball if they do not make a Braun Strowman shirt that just simply says, I'm not finished with you. That's all they need to do. You know what they oh. also need to do? Well, you need one of those, you know, those electronic educate or uh, electronic interactive ones where you press a button and it just yells "Braun," like his Another entrance thing. music. Yeah, that's what I forgot to mention as well. Um, Alexa Bliss had the line of the week this week on talking sm- or, t- or on talking on Raw Talk, or Raw Dog in it. If, yeah. <laughs> if you, it's catching on, if you're nasty. <laughs> oh, after um, dark. But, <laughs> she had the best line. It was when she said to Renee Young about, if I say Beetlejuice three times, will I get a parade with balloons? Oh, no. <laughs> that was great. I watched that. Because yes. Renee had that Beetlejuice jacket on. Yep. Oh, exactly. Oh. I'm sad I didn't watch she it. she was though. upset was, there was no... It was amazing. There was no balloons for her. But mm-hmm. Renee Young is a beautiful, beautiful woman, too. And my, yeah. gr- my girlfriend is a huge Renee Young fan as well. And we were watching that and just shaking our heads saying, why would you go with the Beetlejuice jacket? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it, it wait, 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 the, the striped Beetlejuice Jack? Yeah, yes. she had a striped. Yes. yes. It what? Looked, it looked, For the pre-show. Yeah. And exactly like when Beetlejuice comes out and he has the, um, is it the merry-go-round? Yeah. 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 So it's black and white stripes. Or yeah. the classic cartoon. Yeah, I watch a lot of the cartoons. Yeah. 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 Um, wow. Uh, I, yeah, Alexa Bliss had a great comment. About well, that. I just learned that I like Alexa Bliss even more now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Anything else you learned? From that comment. Um... Uh, I learned that WWE is not afraid to take chances, mm-hmm. as evidenced by the uh, House of Horrors match. Mm-hmm. Um, and I also learned that I really, really, really love the Hardy Boys coming back to WWE. Uh, there's been, even though they're not broken? Even though they're not broken. I, I can't wait to see them get to that point. They're, st- they're, they're getting more and more. They're yeah. still doing the delete thing. They're still, you know, that's really getting into it on Twitter. Twitter has been really yeah. like Twitter. Twitter is more interesting than what they've been doing on TV. But what they've been doing on TV um, has been interesting. This like, is the appetizer. Oh yeah, when like the main said, course yeah. is finally served, it's going to be everybody com- delightful. Every, everybody complains about it not getting here yet. But like, but I thought it was gonna happen last night. It, it's it's it, it's everybody. Everybody's like, this is too quick. But then they get mad when there's a slow burn, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and until it gets to the end of the ride, right? Well, we we've already identified that a lot of the issue is is the legal ramifications between yeah. TNA and <laughs> WWE. Yeah. Hashtag so, fuck that out. As as the in house attorney, you can attest to how long the process is when. Attorneys are involved. Sure, sure. Yeah. Years, um, or at least exactly until SummerSlam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was like I said last week. Watching the Hardys now, you can watch. It's almost like watching the lawyers work week to week because they can slowly get. They slowly get more and more available to them. It's just. The, it's just the temperature of how the the case is going. And yeah. there's always yeah. a Matt. You can tell Matt always has a little bit of a pause, like. Can I do just just one, mm-hmm. just one swipe? Like I almost feel like you have two people sitting down at a mediation, right? You have the WWE's lawyers and TNA's lawyers, and it's like, all right, well, we'll let you do uh, one swipe, uh, but you can't say delete when you do the swipe. You could say delete, but you can't do the swipe with it. Yeah, on, and, on Monday Night Raw this week, and, and they're like, okay, and we'll three take that. Uh, 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 right. That's it. Just right. three. <laughs> the hair, the hair can only have now. like <laughs> a quarter of the hair has to be white, like. Yeah, half I, frizz this week. Half frizz. Right. It can't go out too far. It has to stay I, in the confines. That settlement, that thought, settlement arrangement sure, that they reach though. is going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good I fake for sure. book. What's that? I thought for sure that it, like the, during the Cesaro swing afterwards, the way he was holding his head, I thought he was going to have a premonition. Mm-hmm. And just like go in full into the character. Well, he starts talking, you know, he's, when they come out uh, uh, to confront him on, on Monday night, and I'm just like, Wait, is he doing the accent? No, he's just regular Matt Hardy. Wait, there's a little bit of wait, is there there's a little like, I'm, bit I'm, of it? I'm judging there. it. You know, I was like, wait, is it it's like 
are we V1 or are we broken? I, I, um, it's like he's trying to shake an accent that he's had for a while. <laughs> like he forgot how to talk like yeah. Matt Hardy. Yeah. Yes? I learned something this week. What'd you learn? I learned that Andrew Palos uses performance enhancing drugs. <laughs> There's a video of him eating a, a Super Mario star <laughs> as his, pre- ro- his pre- pre-workout routine. It's pretty Performance fantastic. enhancing. There you go uh chad did you go no um i i what i learned this week is more of a a internal question i had while watching the pay-per-view i i thought to myself the foreign announcers are they are they as good or better than the english announcers if you (laughs) if you you mean if you could understand if i if i could understand them like the the uh spanish commentators have been there the same people oh, wow, yeah. forever. Yeah. yeah. Forever, or are yeah. they really Bobby. good at their job? Mm-hmm. Or does Vince not understand them and just allows them so carte knows? blanche? I, I, I have that question because I go watching a couple of New Japan shows. Because then now on the pay per views, they always have the list. They have yeah. like six or seven different tables now yeah, that yeah. do, because of their streaming in different territories, yeah. they broadcast in all these languages and they have them on site. Well, here's what's funny. So none of the American announcers scream when they introduce themselves at the beginning of the pay-per-view. <laughs> but every time they introduce the foreign announcers, they always scream. It doesn't matter what language they're speaking in, they're always I think, screaming. I think it's just I think that's just you don't understand them. It just sounds like screaming cuz right? Yeah. I mean, no, I'm telling you, pay attention next time at the pay-per-view. Every time they're like, let's take it to our, you know, our international announce team, and then you have the Spanish announcer, blah, 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 blah. and yeah. then you have the, you know, the Russian announcer. Blah, blah. They're all screaming. <laughs> I'm telling you, yep. pay attention to it next time. You will see the screaming. But it's not like Michael Cole comes in. He's like, we're gonna be back. <laughs> like that'd be great if he did. Their enthusiasm is second to none. Yeah, <laughs> it's second yeah. to none. Yeah, because they know they only have that small amount of time on actual right. actual TV. Yeah. That, to, that's to the definition of getting your shit in. <laughs> As an international yeah. announcer, yeah. but that was what I learned was like it was just an internal monologue. Was I wonder if I could speak those languages, and understand those languages, if I would have a better or different, just different experience mm-hmm. with the same shows. I always wonder if it's as awkward as us watching New Japan because you have Kevin Kelly and um, uh, the guy uh, Cyrus from ECW on it now, right? Or, oh, Don Callis. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, and uh, it took me a while to figure out who the hell he was with some of the commentary that the comments they were making. Uh, but anyways, but but like you know, you watch, you watch, you watch, and then here's a promo that's not subtitled in Japanese. And we're like, all right, like is that the experience for them watching the American yeah. WWE stuff? Like, da 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 da. Yeah, how do they promo describe they the don't stories? Understand, how, right? yeah. how do they? Yeah. What's their calling style? When there's like? a promo, you know, like like I remember yeah. sitting in, in Lucha Underground, and I'm like, I don't know what the hell Pentagon Junior is saying right now. But it's awesome, and I'm going to cheer when those people cheer, and we're okay. I'll check it on the subtitles later when it airs. You know, maybe I, mean, I should try to watch the network to see if I can get the Spanish feed with the English subtitles. Well, you have that. You you have. I'm, I'm well, gonna have you, to, you have the Spanish feed. Just see, go to the SAP. Yeah, go, yeah, to, and, <laughs> go to the S. Okay. Let me see if I can find the angle. Maybe I can. As as the producer Missy, I am going to make sure that we all get Rosetta Stone, and we are going to learn different <sighs> languages. Wow, I'm going to learn this. Wow. Just so I can watch CMLL. <laughs> can, I, can, I have, can I have Muzzy instead? What? Remember Muzzy? Yes. Muzzy. Yes. Flashback no. to childhood, yes, like, infomercial yes. with this giant fuzzy th- th- French-speaking... Like, Je suis la chouffie. Yes. <laughs> I remember those commercials. Yes. That bear looked like yep. it was going to eat her every time. Yes. It was like a weird fuzzy thing, like monster... Yeah. Well, I, 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 I get a huge kick out of hearing you say Je suis la jeune fille because you are not a little girl. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like if I spoke French, that would be the character I would portray. <laughs> oh, like, like kind of like Ladybeard. Hey, Have you seen Ladybeard? No. Oh, he's this guy. Oh, geez. I, we don't have time for this tangent. <laughs> I'll have to show you Ladybeard after the show. Okay. Um. I, okay, I'll just leave it there. Uh, okay, Lady, okay. Lady From the chat. <laughs> Tune just, in next just, week for just Lady Google, Beard. Google Lady Beard Japan. <laughs> and wait, 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 wait. 
I'll leave the camera on you just in case as I read the chat room. Chat room says, uh, Wheels learned that you can't preach that. Of course, the Rev uh, showed up in RWA this past week. Uh, can't wait to get to that edit, too. I have a lot on my plate. I'm waiting for that reaction to come up over there. Uh, Tina Keys, uh, no, 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 that, that's not it. Uh, wow. Mad Mike learned. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Lady Beard. Mad Mike learned that Eric Rowan uh, might as well just leave WWE at this point. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, John, John learned that Jeff Hardy's tooth was broken. Um, Tina learned that Great Balls of Fire pay per view is foreshadowing the Hardy shooting off Roman candles. Yes. Uh, um, uh, Brandon learned that Ellsworth is half woman. All right. Uh, Mad <laughs> Mike learned that uh, the reason Triple H gave Kevin Owens the universal title is because Owens delayed Rollins from interfering in the WWE title match from the WWE comic. <laughs> this is true. That's what I learned as well. Wait, is there a new issue out? I got to get pick that up. I think I got, I'm up to like issue three. Um, I just fucking said the muzzy thing out loud when you did too. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, so uh, what did I learn? Uh, what did I learn? Jeez. Uh, don't watch the House of Horrors in the Starbucks when it's sunlight out. <laughs> First of all, uh, don't yes, yeah, so watching. I don't know. It's weird in the dark too. So um, there you go. Uh, that's that, that. That's all I got. Um, guys, thank you so much. David Law is joining us. It was fantastic to have you in the studio hanging out. Thank you for having me. This was a, a joy. It was delightful. <laughs> <laughs> and we're getting sued. Um, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm a lawyer. Yeah, I'll like hey. Ch- uh, check him out, Gavel Lawless. Yes, at Gavel Lawless on Twitter, at Gavel David Lawless on Instagram, and Facebook.com slash Gavel David Lawless. Gavel David Lawless at gmail.com for booking inquiries as well. But uh, seriously, if anyone has any questions, uh, comments, concerns, photos, ch- uh, check out the social media, hit me up. We normally do a, like a caption this contest where you can win some of the David Lawless merchandise, uh, cool T-shirts for sale. Uh, the host of the show has actually been given the black and gold yep. Air Lawless shirt. I'm wearing the uh, Kentucky blue and gray Air Lawless shirt, but we've got like four other designs. I just want to try to get a pro wrestling tea store and, and have as many social media imprints as Jackson Argos. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah, right. Good luck right. on that one, right? <laughs> uh, yes, I, it was weird because we are like both sitting there and Chachi got a rev shirt that night and it was just like, wow, black and gold's really in, isn't it? <laughs> so. uh, you know, you got to know your market when you're in Pittsburgh. Um, and then before, real quick shout out to a, a lot of my friends that I just want to give uh, shout outs to. Sean Phoenix and Lee Moriarty, who are going to be competing in the welterweights, as well as Sonny uh, Vice. Uh, my boys in Locked and Loaded, Gannon and Duke. Um, and then uh, Rev Ron Hunt, who just made his debut in the uh, RWA this weekend, too. Uh, Rev, you will be sorely missed. But uh, And then Lewis, the nerd. Fantastic. Uh, oh, you should check him out. Yes. Always check out Lewis, the nerd. Um, and then, you know, Chris, Jack, Connor, all, 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 the, all the regulars, Mark Mann. Everyone, mm-hmm. Peyton Graham, everyone, what's up? <laughs> awesome. Chad the Shad, at Chad the Shad on the Twitter. Yes, that's where you can find me. It's a lot of hockey talk right now. Of course. So. Mm-hmm. Of course. A lot yeah. of angry hockey talk after last night. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. No. Don't worry. We're getting it back happens. in game game four. It happens. There you go. Yeah. Bobby yeah. FJ Town, thank you for joining us. Go to his, inter- his Instagram, Bobby FJ Town. To see his walls of pop figures. I have so many now. So many. And also check out I his... Ordered, I ordered more today. Check out his pop figure episode from a couple months ago on panelriot.com too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. Yep. Missy Soar's here. Wife of the show on the Twitters. Yes. Doing wife of the show um, things. I-, I do have to thank Tina for pointing out that Saturday is free comic book day. Yay. Oh, so... I said that too. Yeah, uh, the, if you said it, I didn't see it, but um, I'm seeing it now. In the I chat heard it. I, you couldn't see it because I audibly said it. <laughs> oh, I don't listen, obviously. I didn't see your words. Shush. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Free comic book day, Saturday. <laughs> awesome. And of course, uh, at Sogertron on the Twitter for me. And check out SogertronMedia.com. We got a lot of things going on. Over there uh, with uh, the wrestling shows and, of course, uh, our, our plenty, plenty of affiliates, including our friends at the Scarehouse Podcast, scarehousepodcast.com. Panel Riot, like I mentioned, uh, Bold Nights Out if you're in the Pittsburgh area. want to uh, see what there is to do in food and drink and entertainment. And, yeah, high five. No? <laughs> what? No. I'm getting a wave. You keep taking my audio from me. This is why I keep waving you. 
Um, don't forget that we're also doing our gaming discussion on That's Thursday. Right. Uh, Whoa. We're rebooting a gaming show. Chad the Shad's going to be part of that, I believe. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I don't know if he just found out about that. No, I, yes. Uh, So that'll be Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We will have links out. Check out awesomecast.com, awesomecast on Twitter and Facebook. I believe we'll be streaming on Twitch for that. Uh, Chachi will be a part of that. And so will Riz. And Riz will be a part of that as well. Riz plays games. Um, but yeah, check out everything going on there. We got a lot of fun stuff happening at SorgatronMedia.com. And of Josh. course, IndieWrestling.us and our friends, um, IWC Wrestling, RWA Live, um, uh, have shows coming, uh, all the time, it seems these days. <laughs> so, holy crap. And of course, please check out PWX, uh, PWXTV.com. Correct. A lot of wrestling going on in the tri-state area. Oh my God, yes. What holy benefit shows this year. Yeah. Is it? There's, there's only going to be more coming, too. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll mention a couple of them. I'm excited about one happening, I think, later in May. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have tweets on and stuff. Watch, watch us on social media. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, chat room. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.